What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today I'm doing something a little bit different of how to fantasy Premier League guide. Kind of a beginner's thing so if you've been around for a number of years there might not be as much to take away from it but give it a watch anyway you never know what you might pick up um, and if you have been around for a number of years first thing I want you to do is leave a comment below um, and let me know your number one FPL tip for any beginners that are, are coming along and watching the video so they can go down to the comment section and not take away just what I'm saying but also what you guys are saying in the comments below and obviously give the video a like much appreciate it we've had a huge amount of likes on the videos this season so far so let's keep that up so um, fantasy premier league is the biggest fantasy football game the biggest soccer game um, in the world over six million managers last year and it seems to be rising every single year so expect that to continue um, you build a team you manage it you make transfers over a 38 game week period um, and you can compete against your friends in mini leagues and stuff so let's jump into the video and go through step by step uh, each part of Fantasy Premier League. So I'm going to assume you've at least logged in and you've got a screen like this. If you haven't got quite that far, then send me a message on Twitter and I'll help you. But hopefully you're looking at um, this squad uh, picture as it is. You've got 100 million to spend, which sounds like quite a lot of money. But when you start thinking that players like Raheem Sterling and Mo Salah are 12 million plus, that budget goes really quickly and you've got to spend it on 15 players. Um, you can only have a maximum of three from each uh, club. So let's say you've got Robertson, Salah and Firmino from Liverpool. There are no more Liverpool players for your squad. You've got to transfer one of them out before you could get another Liverpool player in. Otherwise, obviously, you look from players from other clubs. And because um, the best teams have the most expensive players, you've often got to look at kind of newly promoted teams or teams that aren't um, expected to do as well to pick up their cheaper players. Um, so you play 11 each week. You have three subs. My advice would be to spend most of your money on the first 11 that you're going to play week in, week out. Yes, your substitutes can come on and get points. So it's worth having substitutes that do play um, so you can get some additional points if they come on. But you're not going to play them most weeks. So I wouldn't spend a ton of money on there. I try and spend the minimum possible on my bench when I build my squad, especially at the start of the season. And then just to confirm, it's two goalkeepers, five defenders, five midfielders and three forwards that you have to have. So you've got to pick them for your squad. Um, and then you're ready to start managing your team. So every week you have to manage a squad of 15 by picking 11 players to start the game. There must be at least one goalkeeper, three defenders, two midfielders and one forward. Um, outside of that you can have any combinations. You could play a 3-4-3 three, three, um, or you could play five defenders, four midfielders and one forward. It doesn't matter as long as you've got that combination in there from the start. Um, the go-to formation for a lot of FPL managers is 3-4-3 three, three, or 3-5-2 three, and it has been that for a number of years. But for the 2019-20 season... Um, a lot of people are looking at going four or five at the back because you get attacking defenders that also get assists and goals. Um, they can be mega points for not much money. So a lot of people are looking at going bigger at the back. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But obviously you can choose how you want to play. Um, your captain gets double points. So let's say you've got Salah. He scores 10 points against Norwich. Then he'll end up with 20 points. But the same is said for a negative. So if you play your captain, they get a red card. Uh, and they're on minus two points and they'll get minus four for being captain which is unfortunate doesn't happen very often but it can do uh, and you'll also have to select a vice captain so if your captain plays no minutes in a game then it will go to your vice captain to get double points uh, but if your captain was on the bench and they come on for one minute then unfortunately they stay as captain it's only if they play no minutes at all and if your captain and vice captain don't play um, then basically you get nothing no double points at all for that particular week uh, the deadline for submitting all your changes is one hour before the first kickoff of the first game of the game week. So, as an example, if the first game is at 12.30 on a Saturday, um, then the deadline will be 11.30. If the kickoff is at 8 o'clock on a Friday night, the deadline will be 7 o'clock. So, you get a bit of a chance to try and find out some starting lineups, some early injury news and stuff like that. So, try and leave your changes as late as possible and the same for your transfers. Um, but obviously don't forget to confirm them because that can be a bit of a disaster. Um, generally, like I said, you want to spend the most money on your first 11. So that's the 11 you play week in, week out. Um, and you also want two solid captains. So, for example, in this, I've got the likes of Salah and Sterling. So I can captain one of them every week. So I want to give myself the best opportunity to get the most amount of points. Um, and then obviously have a good squad structure. So, for example, um, I've got Salah and Sterling, very expensive players. Because I've got them, I can easily swap to another expensive player rather than having to make lots of changes to my team. So that's a bit more of an advanced thing, squad structure, which I'll talk about in other videos, but just something to be aware of. So as you'll see, when you start building your squads, every single player has a price. And right up until game week one, that price cannot change. So um, if you see a player now that's priced at six million, they'll still be six million before the season starts. Once the season starts, that does change though. Players can start going up and down in price. And that basically depends on whether an FPL manager is buying or selling them and how many are doing that. So if lots of FPL managers are buying someone, they might rise in price and this, the flip and reverse is the same. If lots of managers are selling them, 
um, and they could go down in price. The exact percentages we don't know for sure, but sites on the screen like fplstatistics.co.uk do track that. And as the season goes on, they get a lot more accurate at showing you whether a player is going to rise or fall. And I wouldn't let that control your decisions, but if there's a player you know you're really going to want and they're going to rise on in price, you might want to buy them a little bit earlier. Obviously, you want to be careful about them getting injured or playing in other matches where they could get injured. Um, if they're going to rise in price, you might want to buy them. So you can use like sites like FPL Statistics. They're really handy for that. Um, so player prices don't change, like I said, until the season starts. And then once a game week starts, um, they can change up to 0.1 million a day uh, and then up to 0.3 million per game week. So if there's a full seven days between game week one and two, um, a player could rise on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 0.1 million each day. But they wouldn't be able to rise for the rest of the week until the next game week starts. And that's the same for increases and decreases. So they can only go down 0.1 million a time. And then in terms of profit, let's say you've got um, a player that starts at 7 million and they go up to 7.1 you can still only sell them for 7 million. You need them to go up to 7.2, so you get an extra bit of profit. So you get 50% of profit on the increases. So for every 0.2 million a player goes up, you get 0.1 million extra on your selling value. So let's say I've got James Madison, he's 7 million. He goes up to 7.2. I can then sell him if I want to for 7.1. Uh, and obviously just remember that you can also lose money. So if a player goes down in price, you lose 0.1 a time. So that's price is something to definitely keep an eye on because it can affect your transfers. So that once you've built your squad, that is not the squad you'll have in game week 38 because basically you can make transfers to change it every single week. FPL will give you one transfer per week uh, and there's a max that you can hold is two. So for example, let's say I go into game week two uh, with one transfer and I don't use it. In game week three, I'll have two transfers. But if I don't use one or both of them in that week, I'll still only have two in game week four. So two is the max you can hold, but you could have two, just use one. Uh, and then have two the following week. So two is the max you can have, uh, and you get one free transfer every single week. Uh, obviously, it's got to be within your budget. So let's say you've got a midfielder for £6 million that you want to sell, and you've got no extra money in your bank. You can't buy anyone over £6 million, um, without getting the extra money by selling an additional player, potentially, or, or selling one that's a higher price. Uh, and you can make more than one or two transfers every week if you want to, but they won't be free. They'll cost you four points. So in the example I use, let's say in game week three, I've got two tran free transfers and I want to make three, that'll cost me four points. Uh, if I want to make four, that'll cost me eight points, etc. So each additional one costs you four points. And there are times when you'll want to do that. You might have lots of injuries or lots of suspensions and need to make additional transfers. Um, again, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more. But as a general rule, like I've put on screen, you want to try and keep the number of transfers you make to a minimum because they are precious. And a lot of the times you'll find you'll transfer someone out and then they'll score points anyway. And the player you bring in, they won't. So obviously there's a, a bit of an art to choosing when and when to make transfers. Uh, but we'll talk about that in future videos and stuff like that. So try and keep them to as minimum as possible. You can spend additional, spend additional points, uh, but don't do it unless you absolutely need to for the most part. So chips are one of the most important parts of FPL uh, and they're probably so important I might do a whole other video on them completely but to try and keep it brief here wildcard tends to be the most important one um, it's the only chip you get two of so you get one wildcard right up until January and then one after January to the end of the season and all the chips once you use them once so once you use one of your wild cards your triple cats and your bench boost or your free hit they are gone you don't get to use them again for the rest of the season obviously wild cards slightly different because you get two but for the rest of them you only get to use it once um, wildcard lets you change your entire team around and then you get to keep that until you start making transfers again so if I use my wildcard in game week 10 that will be the same team I have in game week 11, 12, 13 until I start making transfers again. Free hit is similar, but you only get to keep your team for one game week. So let's say I'm going into game week 10 and I use the free hit. I'll get a completely new team or a team that I want to use in game week 10. But then game week 11, that team will go back to the same one that was in game week 9. And I will have been affected by price rises and falls that have happened as well. Um, so you can't dodge that with a free hit. Uh, bench boost you essentially get all the points uh, that your bench player score so you basically get points from the whole squad of 15 and then triple captain you get an extra captain score so rather than your captain score being doubled it gets tripled instead um, basically when you want to use these chips the the, wild, the early wild card happens quite a lot a lot of people do that so by game week three or four we know which players are doing well maybe there's some cheap players that are doing great Maybe there's players starting that we didn't think would. So a lot of people use their wild card early. But essentially, you've got any time you need it up until January. Um, the free hit is really important. We have things called blank game weeks and double game weeks, which happen later in the season. A blank game week is when teams are missing from that game week because maybe they're playing in a cup game. 
and a double game week is basically for when their fixture gets rescheduled and they might be playing two games in a, in a single game week so they're really important again something to cover in another video but your free hit chips really um, good for navigating that and so is the second wild card um, the triple captain it depends a lot of people use that in single game weeks but i like keeping it for the double game weeks because you've got that um, big chance of a player playing in two games and getting a huge point tool. And the bench boost tends to obviously be when you've got a good bench. And the best times to build that tend to be after a wild card or maybe even in game week one because obviously you can set your squad to whatever you want um, and maybe set up your bench to, to get the most amount of points from that week. So you can use all those chips once and that's it. Um, I like to save a lot of them for the double game weeks and blank game weeks. They don't come till around game week 30, so it is a long wait. But you only get one a season, so they're really important. So I try and keep them as late as possible. So leagues are a really fun part of FPL. You can be in up to 20 private leagues. Um, there's also public ones as well. So a private league is obviously like one you can set up with your mates. I've got one for the Let's Talk FPL channel. If you want to join that, link is in the description below as always. Um, but generally, yeah, private leagues are kind of a fun way to compete against your friends, family, whoever it might be, people at work. Uh, a lot of people have work leagues as well. And you basically get classic scoring or head-to-head. -head. So in classic scoring, um, it's basically just a free-for-all who can get the most points over the season. So your points from game week 1 to 38 are just totaled up. Um, and you can also set up leagues kind of later in the season. So let's say if you wanted to do a post-Christmas league, um, just for the remainder of the season, you could do that as well. And then a head-to-head -head league is basically, say you've got 10 people in a head-to-head -head league. Each week you will play against someone and whoever gets the, the win, essentially, whoever scores the most points between you and your opponent um, will get three points for the win and then that will get totaled up over the season. So it's not just about who can score the most over the season. It's about who can beat the most amount of players. So when you spend too long on leagues, they're a really interesting way to uh, have a bit of extra fun with FPL. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm in a lot of leagues already, but you're obviously free to join mine uh, and check it with your mates and stuff and create one as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, whether you're a beginner or a pro, hopefully you took something away from that. Leave me a comment below. Um, if you're new to FPL, what do you think? What did you take away from the video? And if you're a pro, um, let me know your number one tip in the comments below so that other people can learn from uh, the community that we've got here on Let's Talk FPL. If you did enjoy the video, give it a like. It'd be much appreciated. Trying to get to a thousand likes on this video. Um, that would be truly awesome. Uh, and if, in, if you're new around here, hit subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified for all new videos got loads of pre-season content coming on this channel as always and then once the season kicks off we'll have weekly previews previews of my team um, and two streams a week as well to chat through all your fpl questions and what's going on in the world of fantasy premier league so i'm going to leave it there like comment share subscribe all of that good stuff and good luck with fpl